Chesterton also speaks of the test of fairyland. This is a test of imagination, he says. And this test of imagination concerns moral truth, which must be distinguished from mathematical logic or scientific fact. I quote him, you cannot imagine two and one not making three, but you can easily imagine trees not growing fruit and rock candy instead. The real magic of fairyland, however, is not that tomorrow morning I should expect to find growing in my backyard a tree whose limbs are weighted down with rock candy, though this, would, this could happen in a fairy tale. No, the real magic of fairyland has little to do with physical or biological science. A fairy tale may tell of an evil witch who possesses the mysterious pat power to turn a good prince into a stone, and a fairy godmother with the equally mysterious power to turn that stone prince back into his rightful self. The truth of the fairy tale, however, lies not in the explanation of these powers. These transformations are but signs of the moral truths that lie at the heart of the fairy tale, truths which it seeks to communicate. If we look in the fairy tale for an explanation of the transformative power of the fairy godmother, as we look for an ex explanation in science of how liquids turn to solids, we are bound to come up empty-handed and disappointed. Rather, here's the point of it, the magic of the fairy tale lies in its capacity to make us see that we, each and every one of us, are capable of committing both the evil of the wicked witch and the good of the fairy godmother. I said make us see, but perhaps the better word would be make us to imagine that each and every one of us are capable of com committing both the evil of the wicked witch and the good of the fairy godmother. The great fairy tales enable us to discern what is the difference between good and evil and judge whether we ourselves are like the wicked witch or like the fairy godmother. The great fairy tales challenge us to test in our imaginations how we would respond to circumstances in which good and evil are in the balance. They invite us to make correlations between the imaginary characters and the worlds they depict, and the world in which we live. And in this way, fairy tales exercise and build up the moral imagination and engender virtue. Indeed, they are resonant with the most profound qualities within us that make us human. And yet, our evolving culture would persuade us that the fairy tales are outdated, even toxic, and that we must either revise to our enlightened taste, or replace them with new stories. Once again, Chesterton comes to our rescue. Even writing almost 100 years ago, he is wise to where our civilization might be headed and where it seems to have landed in our day. The fairy tale may, and I quote him, seem incredible to us in our time. But this is because the big civilization we have built, he continues, is a specialist and singular and somewhat morbid thing. In short, it only seems incredible, that it says a fairy tale, only seems incredible to us because we ourselves shall very soon be incredible. So he urges as a remedy that all ethics ought to be taught to a fairy tale tune. That's something I never quite tried on my colleagues. It might have been worth it to see the looks on their faces. That all ethics ought to be taught to a fairy tale tune. And then we might not become so incredible. What a strange suggestion. But also, what a wonderful piece of advice for parents and teachers. Instead of a didacticism that is often off-putting and counterproductive, the fairy tale tune captivates, enchants the minds of children, because 
It appeals to their native sense of narrative and their blossoming imaginations. Not only can fairy tales be enjoyed because they are moral, Chesterton concludes, but morality can be enjoyed because it puts us in fairyland, in a world at once of wonder and of war. Thank you for watching. We hope you are enjoying these clips and invite you to watch the full courses at classicalu.com, where you will find content designed for anyone seeking to understand the classical tradition of education and how to teach with excellence.